Thank you for tuning in. This is week eight of a 52-week series on various web administration-related blog videos. In previous weeks, we've already talked about various troubleshooting tools, IS, host headers, certificates, a chicken before the egg issue, we talked about DNS, and a few different things here. And then upcoming later this year, we have uh, many other things, primarily in the IS space, but many other troubleshooting tools. Hopefully you find useful. Today, I want to talk about URL Rewrite, which is a powerful tool available in IIS 7, 7.5, and in future versions, used for rewriting URL. So as a request comes in, you can rewrite it, and you can redirect it. URL Rewrite is one, actually, I hope to spend a few weeks on. There's so much to cover. There's a lot of different examples. And whether you're a web administrator or developer, I wouldn't be surprised if you've already run into situations where you wanted to uniquely handle that URL for some reason or other. Uh, some examples to give you for where URL rewrite comes in handy is search engine optimization, SEO. Many times you may want to ensure that there's always that dub 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 at the beginning and search engines prefer that. There's a lot of other things you'll do. For example, long URLs, you can make them friendly URLs, dynamic pages in the back end, you can make look like static pages. And also it's used in the shared hosting space. Many people will take multiple sites and host them under a single account using URL rewrite to map that automatically in the back end. And the equivalent that you'll see in other spaces is mod rewrite. You'll see in the Apache space or prior to IS7 you had tools like ISAPI rewrite was a great tool and there's other tools available sitting at the ISAPI layer that will do this. But in IS7 it's built right in natively. It's very convenient. It's a small add-on. It's free as long as you use an IS7 and extremely powerful in terms of what you can do. Basically you can take any incoming request and any of the server variables that is available to you. IP, the host header, the client's IP, you can take browser agents, you can take whether it's HTTPS, whether it's not, a lot of different decision points and then you can transform this URL either on the way through or you can do a redirect, a client-side redirect back to the user to come in with a different URL. Additionally from URL rewrite 2.0 and on you can actually do outgoing requests too. You can take the page in flight on the way out and actually transform that page and do some pretty incredible stuff with it. So today is an intro. It's week one of a few weeks here on URL Rewrite. And what I want to do is touch base on some of the key things here. One of the things is the difference between wildcards and regular expressions. We'll talk about site level and global level rules, how to install, and then I want to show one practical example is how we would ensure that we have that dub 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 added for search engine optimization on every single page. And then future weeks I'll dig into these in a lot more depth, getting into regular expressions, getting into some more complex rules, and how you can create your own rules for your own situation. So first let's just ensure that you have this on your system and know how to install it. What you can do is if you go to www.is.net, if you don't have it already, you can get this and just search for URL rewrite. And you can see this top link here. Download, and you can download directly. So x86 or 64 bit, and you can, or you can use the web platform installer, whichever method that you prefer, and install that. You may have to reboot the machine, so just make sure you're ready for that. It's not necessarily the one time only install it may require that reboot. Once you have it available, it's available, for example, here at the site level. You're going to see this URL rewrite available in IIS Manager. And it is possible to write these at either the site level or even the global level. URL rewrite is here as well. And you can actually do it at a subfolder level too. In fact, it doesn't even need to be marked as an application. You can do it as any kind of subfolder at any point. Now, this branches off into kind of a side topic here, but notice something. If you're managing these rules. The question now is where do these rules get applied and where is the configuration stored? So you can see with URL rewrite here at the site level, notice the configuration here. This is called distributed configuration. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I'll talk about this in more depth some other week. But notice that it's actually applying to the web.config for the particular site. And for example, let's just do a real quick dummy rule. So if we do a blank rule, we're going to call this redirect to Google and I'm going to come back and use this in a minute and I'll come back and fill in these fields in a moment but let's just say no action and apply so what this has done it saved the rule now if I right click here I'll explore go to contosa.com path and which I just have here in the www root if I go to the web.config file 
Notice that it's actually saved this here under system.webserver. You can see the rewrite rule here. So if you ever do see examples that people have, for example, on the web or in the IIS forums, and it shows you the actual syntax for the rule, you can just drop it in yourself. But it's really important to notice that because you're touching the web.config, you're doing an app domain recycle. Any of your session state that may be maintained in PROC is going to get hit, and also you're going to get that first performance hit anytime you hit the site after you do a change. Additionally, if you set this at the global level up here, then you have URL rewrite, and that's in the application host.config, saved up in your system32 inet pub config folder. Now a question comes up, if we do have a global level config, something set here at this level, what's going to happen is a site request will come in, it will bind to the site, and after it's bound to the site, then the global level rule can potentially be applied, or the local rule will be applied. So for example, let's say we set here under Contoso.com, we have a URL rewrite rule. A rule that is set here will only apply to something that is already first bound to this. In the previous few weeks here, we talked about the host headers and various different IIS bindings. If you set it at the global level, it's going to come in, it's going to bind to one of the particular sites, whichever one it binds to, and then the rule will be applied and do whatever it needs to do. So you can actually set a rule at the global level. There's no problem doing that. Understand that you may need to set a specific condition to ensure that it only works for certain domain names or certain IP addresses. Otherwise, it can affect all your sites. That's pretty obvious, I guess, just looking from where it saves, but it's important to understand the order that this works in. So today, let's take a look here at URL rewrite and this rule that I started to create. And so let's edit this. And there's really four, five regions actually now with URL rewrite 2.0 for the rule. So you have, one is just the name when you set it. Two, the most common thing that Microsoft, when they created this, figured we're going to use is the URL. And let me show you what I mean by the URL. If we have a path like this one here, and then let's just say this was default.aspx question mark id equals 55. The URL part is from after this first slash, but not including the slash, up until the end, up until basically your query string, your question mark there. So that part there is the URL. And here, if you do a dot asterisk, and I'll cover the regular expressions on another week, but your pattern here, the dot asterisk basically means let's catch everything in this case. Then we can set a condition. And again, this is a site level rule, so we don't necessarily need one. Depends on what we're trying to do. Uh, but a condition can be, again, it's the host header, is the IP, is it the URL, a query string, any aspect of that incoming request, you can create a condition based on it. And then server variables, available now with URL rewrite 2.0, allows you to actually change most of those server variables in flight if you need to for whatever reason. Again, it's a little bit more of the advanced features, but we do use it for certain situations. This comes in very handy. And then finally, the actual action. What are we going to do? If we bound to it, it met the conditions, now we're going to do something with it. And the two com most common are a redirect and a rewrite. And then you have these other options as well. You can do a custom response, for example, throw a 500 error or abort the request, for example. And we'll talk about what a none is and where we'd use that in future weeks here as well. So that, you, as you can see, there's a lot of flexibility, a lot of power. But right now, let's just for the fun of it, let's do a redirect. And let's redirect to bing.com. Let's make it temporary here so it doesn't get remembered in the browser. What this is going to do, in this case there's no conditions, it's catching everything for the URL, and it's going to redirect to bing.com. So everything under that comes into contoso.com to this site is going to redirect and throw a client-side redirect. Let's try it out. We're going to hit contoso.com, which I have a host header pointing to this local machine, faking it out, and see that it redirected to bing.com. Now let's experiment with just one of the variables for now to get a feel for it. Let's add a condition. And in the condition, collapse that, it's really a condition that I wanted. We're going to add is HTTP host. Actually, this is kind of an interesting dialog box. Look at this. There's no drop-down box. I think Microsoft should add this later on. They either forgot it or there's some reason or other that they haven't added it. But if you hit the beginning curly bracket, now you're going to get a nice good list here of all the server variables available. So we're going to use HTTP host, in this case, which is the domain name. Matches the pattern, and let's make it con 
Cantoso.com. And briefly, on the regular expressions, what happens with the regular expression is you have to be very precise. In other words, this here, right now, will match anything. Anything.contosa.com, anything. So to be precise, we start the string with a caret and end with a dollar sign, which says it has to be exactly this. And also, the dot is a special character. It means any character in there. So to even be real true, we should put a slash dot. It makes it a literal dot. And this test pattern is really handy. Let's try it out. So if we say here, contoso.com, and we test it, notice it matches. But now if we try www.contoso.com and test, it's going to fail. So you can see it has to be exactly this. Okay, so we're going to close this and use this contoso.com, and let's apply. So what's going to happen now, because we have this condition, for contoso.com only, it's going to redirect to bing.com, but not for www.contoso.com. Let's try it. So contoso.com, and notice it redirected, but www.contoso.com does not. And one more point of interest until I get to a final real world example is let's take a look at their options under this using. And whatever option you specify here, there's three options regular expressions, wildcards, an exact match. That applies to the entire rule from then on for all these different conditions down here are all determined by this. And when I first started using this, I wanted to use wildcards. I figured this would be great, especially if I'm going to be training other people on our team and want it to be simple and straightforward. It seemed to me like wildcards would be the way to go. But very, very quickly, it ran into a lot of issues. It just It's limiting for a lot of rules that you want to do. So my encouragement is use regular expressions. It's the default. And start to learn the syntax. It's really not that difficult, and I'll show in these upcoming weeks how to do it. And it'll start to make a lot of sense how the regular expressions work. And you can do exact match. You can do wildcards if you want. If you're doing something that's really straightforward, you want to do one rule, by all means. Well, my goal is to keep these around 10-minute videos, and I realize I'm already running short, running over on time here. So let's go to a real world, and then next we can come back and talk about some of these in more depth. So let's delete this particular rule. And what I want to do is leverage the existing wizard that really helps us with this. So rather than starting with a blank rule, let's jump down here to the search engine optimization SEO section, and we're going to do a canonical domain name here. We'll hit OK. And now what this is, is the domain name that you want it to go to. So select the primary host name. So let's say www.contosa.com. And you would have to enter it in. You can see it has a wizard because I ran this before. And I'm going to hit OK. And it created it for us. Now what we can do is we can rename it if we want. For example, we're going to say redirect to www.contoso.com. And if we go to the rule, Notice what it's done. It's really that dot asterisk. You put it in parentheses, which is still valid regular expression. And it's going to say anything that does not match www.contosa.com. Again, it starts with a caret, ends with a dollar sign, and it's escaping the dots. You have a slash dot, slash dot. It just means dots. We're going to redirect to www.contosa.com. And it's going to maintain the rest of the URL. So if someone comes in with slash default.aspx or slash backpage.aspx, it's going to retain that in the redirect. It's going to do a 301 permanent redirect. So this should work. We'll test it here in a minute. And understand you have way more flexibility here. Sometimes you don't want to redirect everything. You only want to redirect one or two domain names. And you can definitely do this with the conditions. Again, what we'll be covering in future weeks, showing that the flexibility and the power here is way, way more than what I'm just starting to talk on here now. So this is done. Let's try it out. So if, now if we go to contoso.com, refresh, of course it's going to work. Let's do it without the W's. And notice, look at this. It immediately put them back in again. This is so fast, it's hard to catch. Let me do it one more time. I'm going to hit enter. And you can see it did a client-side redirect and added back that www for us. So there we have it. A brief overview of URL rewrite from a high level. Hopefully you find this helpful, and there's a lot more coming. Hope you'll continue to tune in for other weeks. Thank you. Hope you have a good week.